I grew up in a really pathological society because racism was built into everything, every interaction, every day. We did not, as Indians, experience, I believe, 10% of the humiliation and shame and indignity and oppression that black South Africans experienced. You grow up with a lot of nonsense, you know? Even if you're not hearing it at the dinner table or whatever, you, if you're growing up in a society where the norm is like, you know, small amount of white people have everything and it's seen as like a law of nature. And as you grew up, you internalize this idea that they were kind of masters of the universe. But the political change, once it had happened, once the election had happened, was even at a young age, wow, you know, wow, look at what happened. Like, these people who were so condescending and so powerful, they're not gonna get to just like dominate anymore. Like it's actually, the people are gonna be free. It was something extraordinary. There was a great sense of optimism. And I think it came also with great leadership because the leadership was not angry, it was classy, it was magnanimous, it was wise. I'd be very angry if the stuff that happened to him happened to me. Life was not easy for him. And he was one of those people who'd be forgiven for being very angry. Not only did he overcome that for himself, but he, he led with a spirit of forgiveness. What is sad for me now is we've reached a stage where people can actually say things like Mandela sold out or he let us down. Post-apartheid, things are not well, things are not great. That doesn't mean apartheid was better. The ANC has managed to emotionally blackmail people for a long time to kind of go, well, you know, so you prefer how things were in the past. We liberated you. Remember how it was? But people are not buying that story anymore. And that's why you're seeing the EFF grow. You want to know why Malema is rising? Go drive down the highway and see the shacks on the side of the road. Go to Dipslet. The poverty is still there. The inequality is still there. The corruption is still there. People are still living in shacks. Shacks should not be existing in 2018 in South Africa. It's, it's as if, in some ways, the mask has been ripped off and things are more raw and real. Maybe that's an opportunity for things to get better. The land issue is, is a curious one in the country. Everybody talks about it, but it's difficult. It's a bit nebulous. Nobody quite knows what it means when they say the land. Do they mean taking farms from white people? It's not quite the case. When you speak to a lot of people, especially you go to, you go to the townships, you go to informal settlements or squatter camps, people just want a dignified life. This has been politicized. There's a problem. Clearly there's a problem. Wherever it goes, it's actually going to have to confront its problems head on right now. It's in the process of that. That's why it's very interesting to observe it might have to get much worse before it gets better. There's enough to be optimistic about and there's enough to be pessimistic about. I don't know where I stand. I hate that I don't know where I stand because I'd like to actually be able to take a stand on it, but it's, it's a mixed bag of lots of things.